So let's take a look. Let's get started with taking a look at the uh, alternating flams. Okay. And uh, go ahead and put the metronome on at 40. Okay, now put the metronome up, put the metronome up to say uh, 52. See, at this point, I feel as though it's natural to want to make an upstroke or a downstroke, a single stroke. And notice that I'm essentially just turning from parallel. So it's one smooth up to come down, continuous motion. Up, down, 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 down. And as you develop more speed, it makes it a whole lot more easy to not be making two separate motions, to not be turning to the ceiling and then going up for a throw. Okay, so you want to focus on that idea of just turning from parallel to go up. Go ahead and try it again. We're at 52, right? Yeah. Now it takes, an, it, it takes kind of a, a, a great deal of concentration if this is something somewhat new to you. I remember it taking me quite a while to really get the, the idea. Okay. And it, 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 it's wonderful in terms of, you know, a kind of meditation. Mm -hmm. You have to really determine to make this idea of not turning to the ceiling your locus. Point of meditation. Lift it up. Up, oh, lift it up the left. Lift the left. Left. Ah, it's hard for you not to do that. And I get it. Now, show me what, show me what a downstroke in the right looks like. If you were just to make a down without actually, so in other words, you're you're making an up motion to play a downstroke. Do that again. Now, you notice that you're not turning to the ceiling for that? What happened? In a sense, Dick would say you, you're, you're leading with the butt end. That's another way he would put it, right? Mm -hmm. See? Now go, ahead, now, now, go ahead, and before you go, and I don't want you to make a note, but just turn the stick up to the ceiling and then go up. No? Now I can't get you to turn the stick to the ceiling. Turn the stick to the ceiling. Just a little. So in other words, I'm, I'm I'm helping you distinguish between what I want you to do and what I don't want you to do. So what I don't want you to do, but I want you to try it so you can actually feel it and get in touch with what it is you're not going to do. Okay. And that means you imagine how strange it might be to do this. Oh, 
You gotta, you gotta go to the ceiling first. You gotta lift it a little. Every time. No matter how fast you go. See, it's hard to do. It's hard to, to make sense. Why would you lift the beat up and then go up? All right, one more time. Uh. Yeah, just what you did, and then go up. Do that again. Go up to the ceiling first, turn your wrist like this first, and then go up. Just a little watch. Just a little. This is what you're doing when you're this is what you're doing when you're playing alternating alternating flats. You're you're doing something like ah, 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 ah. And I just I want you to learn to not lift up first. So so I want you to learn how, how what does that feel like? Yeah, it doesn't feel good. <laughs> One more time, so because I, I want you to want clarity. Now go up. Make that your motion. What if I were to teach that the throw is to make a throw? You're turning, you're turning the beat up to the ceiling, and then you go up. That that's not what a throw is. A throw is just leading with the butt end, or leaving leaving the beat, or as Martinez would say, fixed point in the universe. Right? It's like that. Exactly. Now in the right, all you're going to do, go ahead and make another correct, make a correct throw where you're leading with the butt end. Go on. There you go. Now all you need to do is, Murray Spivak would say, you're so close to the surface, it's, it, you can't help but make a note. Look. I'm making a little note. Hear it? Listen, listen. Yeah. Okay. It just does that. Look, and I, I make my and I make my blow, as Murray would say. You see, we're just duplicating what a throw is, and you just bump into the surface. That's better. Did you put them? Nah, nah. You, Patrick, is you you could just make downstrokes as quarter notes without the appoggiatura. Try that. That's what it's going to feel like when you do it. It's what that's going to feel like. A lot like that. See? Now all you do is as you go up, you just let the sticks bump into the surface. Ah, ah so you're going from this. And then you're just going to happen to touch. Turn off the metronome for a moment. Okay, so now I, I've been meditating because off on this because Dick Wilson used to sometimes get up from his practice pad, take you by the arm, as I may have mentioned, and give me the weight, give me the weight. No, don't hold it up. He'd want to hold it up. No, no, just give me the weight. And and he'd manipulate. He would manipulate. He would manip he'd have two he'd use both hands. So I'm trying to figure out because I'm looking for ways to help promote certain motions. Mm -hmm. And and your thing right now is tends to be where the upper arm really isn't reacting to the turning to the turning of the wrist. We talked about this last week. So I thought about it. I thought, oh. I had a couple different ideas. But see, when, when I go up, I get that. Now, how do I, how do I, how do I get this across? Now, so 
Let's try. Let's try this. Stay with me. Go ahead. Put the uh, left stick aside. All right. Sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. And now go ahead and place stick in your right on the surface. Take your left hand and lock it in. And take the other. You can take the other hand off for a minute. Just to really, okay, now you have this, it's a different kind of, it's not a fixed point. Now it's like a fixed object. It's an immovable object. Okay, it happens to be a stick. All right, now, so what we're gonna do is we're just going to place our grip, that thing that we've worked on, that grip that you're learning. We're just gonna hold the stick, all right? And, it's going to let the arm relax and it, it kind of is right there's not much to do and i just want you to roll forward don't bring the stick up gotta keep the stick doesn't move it's immovable you're doing this now when i do that you notice my when i do that there is a reaction that occurs. Right? We've talked about this, this idea that the fingers really will respond to the bending of the wrist, the turning of the wrist. You see? So fingers elongate. When we come back this way, the fingers contract, move towards the palm. So if I'm here thusly, locked in, and I'm not going to I'm not going to maintain the left hand holding the stick and locking it in because it, it obscures the view, but I I'm imagining it not moving. OK, I'm leaving this stick exactly where it is. And and, if, and I and I do this. Look what happens. Does that happen with you? Yeah. The hand opens up. The forearm moves forward. A couple inches, and that pulls the elbow forward a couple inches. The okay. hand shoulder. It's not working with you. <laughs> what? Well, let's see. All right. Okay. So let, let me continue in this direction for a minute. We'll find a way. Or I'm gonna have to fly to New York. <laughs> Wait. No, let me maneuver it, manipulate. Okay. So, so all right. So if if I I'm gonna hold this, I'm gonna hold this in place again. Now let your arm hang by your side. Let it go. Shake it out. Murray would talk about that. He'd go, You ever seen how a runner right before a race they shake they shake their arms out? They shake their whole body. Shake, they shake their whole body. You know, I'm not a runner, so I have to be careful. With it. But if you talk about this, this thing, where you're loosening, where you're loosening yourself up, yeah, it out. That's that's how it feels. It's it's nice and relaxed. Okay, we're just going to put the stick, put the hand on the stick, Leslie. Feel the arm hanging. It feels as much like this as possible. Now it's here. Okay, now if I take my other fingers off the stick. Nope. Yeah, yeah. No, nope, just get, I can feel I can feel the butt end on my palm. Uh, my fingers are nice and curled in a musicianly way. You could you could play a trumpet or the piano. They're in a position that right is is, is natural. There. Now, if I, if I, now we're imagining that this first finger and thumb is some kind of pivot point, and we're just going to, and it's, it's locked in. It's as though there's a screw running through the thumb, the thumbnail across to that first knuckle right in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. okay, so there's a screw running through. So the stick can, right? The stick would do this. There's a, this kind of a. Would be some kind of hinge or a fulcrum. Okay. So 
We're just at that pivot point, and we're about to stay locked in, and we're just gonna we're just gonna roll forward just a little. There, happened a little. There, there. yeah, yeah, no, no, don't, don't, don't. Uh, there. Now, 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 just come back. Ah, your elbow's back to your side. I can't see the wall behind it now. No, don't, don't even. You didn't even. There, there. Now come back. There. See it? That's there. Yay! <laughs> wait, wait, wait. See now. Don't, 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 don't stay with me, because that's a really big deal. Now let's now. Okay. So it worked. I'm a genius. Okay. <laughs> Now what happens if we, what happens if we, there, now you put your grip on, now, now we, we, we didn't need to, we isolated just first finger and thumb by removing the other fingers to, to take away variables, to make things easier to think about or to feel. So we see how it works. You go straight forward here, the, the human body, don't, don't go playing it, the human body is constructed so that it really will work this way. The, the leg is different because there's, there isn't an elbow, there's a knee. So it works, but it works very similarly. If you roll up on the balls of your feet, there, that's really what we're duplicating because it's as simple as that. And it, it's more obvious in the legs, you know, eat here because of the anatomy of the human body, because we have an elbow, it does this. You see, when you roll up, you'll notice that your feet, the angle of your feet remains the same, doesn't it? You just roll up onto the balls of your feet. You see, the angle of the feet remains the same. The heels don't go out sideways. You don't go in like this. Mm -hmm. The heels come together, it, it, everything stays straight, and the human body leverages. That's what's happening here. The hand will stay straight, as though it's a foot on the floor. See? And if you just roll forward, this will happen every time, just like that. You don't make it happen. Oh, that was a good one. Now, just stay with me. Okay? That was good. Now, so let's see if you can get the feeling of this locked in. And how and now we're going to introduce how the hand opens up based on the wrist turning. There, there. The, the, what, what's changed? It's just, no, it's changed. Just, yeah, yeah, what's you see, you're doing something there. That's better, see. Okay. It's the fingers that got in your way. I by having you not put the fingers on the stick right away, that seemed to help. Now walk. And it's gotten, now you're starting to feel it with the fingers on the stick. I wonder why that happened. Interesting, isn't it? See, because we're just getting this. It's as if my hand opens up so that the fingers, just like the wrist isn't, <laughs> how can I put this? Just, it's just as though the wrist remains, or the, the wrist does remain straight and aligned, properly aligned. But, you know, the hand, uh, remains in it in its in position which means the stick will remain in position you see mm -hmm. so we avoid getting this by leading with the elbow the hand is now at a different angle towards the surface mm -hmm. the stick is at a different angle towards the surface this technique involves keeping the stick and the and, and the hand therefore the stick aligned and you're just going to roll forward. It will remain aligned, and the elbow will do this, this little thing to allow that to happen. So go ahead and lock it. Almost. Go ahead and lock it in with the other hand. There. Oh, it's going to rest. Nice and easy, too. Go smooth. Look, watch. Watch. I already feel it. Watch. I, I'm going to move a, less than a quarter of an inch. My elbow's moving. That's a little. Side, it goes sideways. It doesn't go forward. No, you have to go slower than that. You're not just going to feel it if you, you have to really. This is the meditation now. It's a, there, and then come back in. 
there, went out that time, and now the elbow swivels in. Let it swivel in. Nope. If, if you hold your arm stiff or do something funny with your fingers, all you get is this goes up real high. That's the gooseneck. Mm -hmm. See? But we don't want that. We want this to just barely move. See, we're going around this fixed point here, this pivot point, nice and easy. And so that this doesn't form too big a hump, the arm reacts a little bit, just the tiniest bit. There it is, that's it. Oh. There, almost, we don't want a huge hump. The arm, the arm will go up and the elbow will move out so that you don't get a huge hump here. It won't be as exaggerated, just a little. Can you feel it going up less than that? Can you see yourself in them? Even less, watch. Uh, how about a 32nd of an inch? There. I felt my arm. This forearm went up ever so slightly, and the elbow reacted as well. That means the upper arm reacted, because the shoulder is another fulcrum. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and take your fingers off the stick again. It really had it working nicely this way. Lock it in. Lock it in. Just let everything relax, and go around that fixed point. You can go up a little more. Go on up, go up a little more. There, there. No, it, but the, uh, see, why does it, when you, you, you get it, you'll, you'll come up and it'll work, and then you come down and it, it, it stays out. Why doesn't it follow the breadcrumbs back? Why doesn't it swivel back? There. No, don't do it. Don't do it. There. Now come back. Do it again. There. Let it come back. Better. There. Let it come back. Keep doing that. There, let it come back. Let it come back. Come on, feel that elbow. Don't do it, feel it. There, that hap there it happened. Oh. One more time. Yeah, they... Nope. The elbow doesn't, doesn't come forward so much. It goes sideways. Did you want it to go sideways? Or? Yeah. Go sideways. Hmm. Try it again. Mine. Hmm. There it is. There it is. It's tiny. It's small. There it is. There it is. Out in. Out in. Look. Wrist goes up. Out in. See, there's a relationship. Out in. Up down. And it seems to me that there's not a straight line here tip to elbow. You have it at a slight angle, you know, maybe five degrees or so, right? Well, you mean when we're just holding the stick? Yeah, it's just holding the stick. Just... Uh, you're, you're right that the stick is not in perfect alignment with the forearm. Is it? No. And Dick would talk about that. The stick runs through the hand in the way I described, flat of the thumb, first knuckle of the first, crack of the first knuckle of the middle finger, the pad of the fourth, the tip of the fifth, and then it goes just next to the bone in your hand. And if you do that, you will notice that it's not quite perfectly aligned. You're right, that's a good observation. Now, what does that have to do See, you're, you're, you're holding your arm like this. Let it down. See, this is a gig. Your, your angle, your angle isn't too bad. It's pretty good. See, it's, it's what you're doing back behind the wrist. There, that's more normal. Now, you just, now what you want to do is just get this. Now, what's happening is it feels like we're moving around the stick. There you go. Just a little move around the stick. Move around the stick. There it is. There it is. There. Now, to get that, yep, leave it, that's it. Do that again, do that again. It's little, yep, there it is. The elbow, 
the timing of the elbow in relationship to the wrist becomes obvious, doesn't it? This is going to go up, down, up, down. The elbow is going to go out, in, up, and out, go together. No, you're not going to feel it that way yet. I just want you to do this. I'll get you there. Stay with me. Hold the stick here. It came up. I don't want it coming up. I want you moving around it. No, I'm just seeing up, down. I'm not seeing out, in. Out, in. There it is. Out, in. It's nice and relaxed. Just feel that. Out, in. Now this time, when you once you get to here, let it go and make a downstroke. Out. No, wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. You had it once. And even then, you were on the edge of mucking it up because you went like this. You got to here. And instead of just lifting it up as you come down, you just threw in a little English. Ah, I'm going to lift it up. No, it's this. Out, in, up, down, up. Watch, watch. This is not going to come up until this goes down. Down. Oh, better. Out, in, uh, up. I got to see the out and the up together. Yeah, but, but wait a minute. Why is, what, wait. We're doing this remedial thing because I've been trying to figure out ways to loosen you up. Watch. If I'm going to go up in this remedial sense, I'm going to leave the bead on the surface and leave the stick flat. That's what you don't want to feel. Try it. Wait, wait, I just want, you need to get to here with the stick flat before you can make your throw. There, you're out, look, your elbow's out. Your wrist is up. Now, now, you're just going to turn and have the, el the wrist come down and the elbow's gonna come in. That's what it's gonna, don't lift anymore. Do it again. No, no, you're not taking your time. So here, here's, the, here's the exercise, take the bead, and you touch the surface. Come on, start at half, half inch parallel bead to butt end. Ah, your arm looks so relaxed right now. Now you're just gonna turn and touch. Right? Stick is on the palm, isn't it? You can feel the butt end on the palm. Okay, stick's flat. Notice the stick is flat or pretty flat. Okay, I want you to leave that stick flat and go around it as though you're holding it. Go on up. You don't need to hold it. Come on, keep it flat. Did the elbow come out at all? Try it again. There it is. There it is. Do that again. Now all you're going to do is flick on the way down. Now you're coming down. You're going to lift it up. It's going to be tiny. Do that again, but you have to go around it flat. Out. Don't lift it up anymore. It's going to be smaller than you think. It's pretty good, though. Oh, no, you come on. Come on, get that position. There. There. It's coming along. Getting there. Do that in the other hand. That's a lot different than what you've been doing, you see. Uh, your, no, now your elbow's going. Look, your, your left is doing. Your elbow's going back on the way down. Just leave it alone. It'll teach you. No, you have to move around. You won't want to jump in and you lift, you're lifting up the butt end. Now, and I don't want you to. I want you to move around the stick by leaving it flat. Remember the flat thing that we talked about? We're kind of back to that. Did your elbow go out? Did it? There it went. There it goes. Up to, no, don't. No, you keep, have to keep your... No, you have to. Now you're doing some little twisty. Fun. Just just remind yourself. Just, just do this. Take your other fingers off. Put the stick in the right down. You need to do this. I need to see what I mean. This is this is the hard work. I mean, we can just go on and on. We we'll have another bunch of lessons, and there you go. There it is. Out, in. This, the hand stays straight. The wrist goes up, straight up. The elbow comes out just a little and goes in. Out, in. Come on, feel it. There it is. You like it better. Let your fingers open up under the stick, so the stick and the stick. Your, your fingers will just feel the stick laying in the same place as when you were holding it before you bent. 
No, just leave the fingers as though they're glued to the stick. The fingers are glued to the stick underneath. Mm-hmm. That's better. They're glued to the stick. Almost. No, it's just going to get to the... That was closer. Come on, you got to get the out-in thing happening first. There you go. Hear how much snappy it is? How much more snappy that is? You're starting to get it. Okay. Okay, I think it was more work for me than it was for you. <laughs> that's much better. Now, you see, that's what I'm feeling. I'm feeling some of that. Watch. You can stay on your left if you'd like. It doesn't really matter, I don't think. But see, that's what I'm feeling. Watch. It's, it, you have this moment when you touch. So you're lever almost like you're leveraging off the surface. And there's only, a, it's just a moment. And I, and I get, watch. There. See? Now, there is a feeling for a moment of moving around the stick. Right there. Then it comes back to the palm. So now it is on the palm. Now we're not doing all this. But there's that moment. It's tiny. It's why you have to feel this thing that is so small that it often gets missed, overlooked, unappreciated. So, boom. Boom. Okay. I'm just I'm just laying the bead on the surface. It's almost like I'm just what? It's almost like I'm just laying the bead on the surface. And then I, I want to move around that stick and get that, that that particular feeling that you now experience. But I'm just dropping it from here. Watch. Okay, I'm just dropping it and I'm going around the stick. Uh, I don't see much bending of your wrist. See, watch. See, the wrist has to bend. Turn. There you go. Almost. Just move, feel move that little bit of moving around. And then all you're going to do is go the other way. Just get that little thing and then, and then make a throw. Easy. Get the top. Almost. There, yeah, almost. There, it's coming along. Do that in the other hand. That's kind of the idea. There you go. Other hand. And now you'll actually start to just, just let me. No, 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 don't, don't jump ahead. Just do that in the right now. It's as if you're leveraging. Watch that moment that the bead touches the surface, Patrick, just the right. Capture this. It's going to move around the stick as it touches. No, I want you to touch. We're making, playing a single. There you go, but make a little note. So it's going to be, it's going to be brief, really brief. There it is. It's going to happen real fast. I want you to get to wait. You're going to go around that stick and then go the other way. Almost. Almost. A little more bend of the wrist. Where's that little bend of the wrist? Be out in the end. There it's coming along. Almost. There you go. Getting there. There. Now just try to play alternating slams with that in mind. We'll let you know. Just play. No, it's just one. No, no you're okay. But play alternating slams. Get that feeling of of moving around the stick. Relax your arms so you're not going to feel it. See, now you really, your arms, your arms are hanging by your side in a way that they've never hung by your side before. That little, no, the, i got to see that quick little bend when you go around the thing. It's a little flick. It happens pretty fast. Well, you can't come up like this. It's watch. It happens real fast. You're going to have to practice this into hand, one hand at a time. I know. But just for a moment, let's just acquaint ourselves with how that would work if we were going to play. See, I'm moving around the stick, around the stick, around the stick, around the stick, around the stick. I'm moving, I can feel there, 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 there. No, 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 no. You've got it. This has to bend and go straight up. There, but the elbow hut goes out a little. You've done it before. You felt there. Almost. All right. Okay. Okay. Much better. That's the idea. Okay. You see, just the simplest little thing. But there's only seven strokes. And you've got one of them, which incorporates two other seven basic strokes. You have the upstroke. You have the downstroke. And then you have the single stroke, which is the up to the down. 
You've got three, so if you get this, now you've got three of the strokes out of the way. You'll be able to apply that to everything. But if you never really get it, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you study this technique for years and never get it. Mm -hmm. right? Dick, Dick would say 15 minutes, 15 years, or forever. Right. Right? Okay, so that was good. Now let's let's apply that to the next stroke. Let's spend another minute here. I want to I want to get a little more work done. So do you have page nine available? Nine. Here. Let me know. Here you go. That's the lawyer in you. I've got page nine right here on my own <laughs> overhead projector. Okay. Now now remember, let's let's just spend a uh, look. You know. When you watch this back, well, you can do that. See, you've leveraged up. There it is. You went, oh, you went like that. See, and then when you come back, it goes like that. That's it. You look smaller, right? And, and that's not a put down. You know, guys want to be buff, and they, you know, but you actually have the appearance where it's as if. Your frame, has, you know how, how Buddy Rich looks pretty small? Sure. You get these really you know, they're great, there's great drummers of all shapes and sizes. I, I get that. But uh, you can be a really big guy and not get much of an attack, not be able to get much volume because you're not really throwing the weight. You're not using your body in a natural way. You can get a, there's a 13 year old girl, she's a little older now, from Japan. Oh my God. She's, she's talk about play, playing like a guy. Plays stronger than most guys. She's tiny, right? <laughs> little 13 year old. And so, yeah, see, you have, it, 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 there's this look that, that happens where you're not, you don't get this thing, you get this thing. You see, you get, see, I'm moving around, see, see that? And mm -hmm. you get this nice, you get this nice flow too. See, it's the swinging like a mug kind of concept, which I haven't talked much about. I'll get into that with you soon. So what's going on now when you look back is, you see, you're just sitting here normally. Your arms, I don't see any, I don't see any, you know, creatures that, that blow themselves up, you know, when, that they feel as though they might need to be aggressive, right? And they they, they get all puffed up, and they, right? the hair stand up on the, on end. And but we're doing the opposite. We're just like this. And then when you go to play, your hands look bigger. Mm -hmm. Spivak, and he holds his hand up. He's got this gigantic hand, right? When you watch the video again, you'll notice that. So that's what I'm seeing. So that's. A, a more relaxed posture. Okay. Now, when we played the strokes previous to the flam and diddle, we, we were into the faint and flam, the flam and faint, and the flam and stroke, right? Now, reacquaint yourself with the faint and flam. So it's a little up to a right it's up up yeah here we are we have the single stroke we're on that stick for just a moment up and you make a little turn here we're not moving around the stick over here are we i don't feel that it's different we're just turning a wrist with that grip right. so we're going up and the other hand is going around that stick for just a little minute it goes up yeah. Right, yeah, you look better. That's good. Good. Now you'll notice that when we go to play the flamadiddle, that stroke has already been introduced. It's part of the flamadiddle. Mm -hmm. See, that's what Murray meant by having the proper chronological order. Go ahead and, and without a metronome, let's just take. <laughs> Accents over the flams. Well, well you, you don't. 
you, played, don't, you don't see accents, right? Right. And, and I'm making a little bit of a throw. I'm not making a big deal about the accent. So, but I want you, I don't mind if there's, you know, Richard would put a dot to indicate a small accent. You know, okay. I don't mind if you want to play a, a, a small or medium accent because I want you to feel this and we don't need to play an accent to make a single stroke. But I think it will induce the single stroke. I want you to, to learn how to get that stick from a low pos position to a high position. And I think a little bit of an accent will help you find that single stroke. Yeah. Take a quick look. Um, comparing for a moment the, uh, the flam and stroke where you have the flam without the accent and the following uh, eighth note with the accent. Yeah, that, that, that's not what, I don't believe that's not what's happening here. I think what, what you're seeing here is. Right, right. We're seeing like when you're playing the flam without the accent, you're not really throwing that flam, right? You're just doing a wrist turn to make that flam. The grace note with a wrist turn. Flam and stroke. Right. But that's not what we're doing here. This is, this is really incorporating a, the faint and flam is part of this stroke. Okay. Okay. So you can see we have the flam part. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay, so now you've got the main flam up to a down with a, a flam. Faint flam. Faint flam. Faint flam. There you go. It's as easy as pie. No. Oh, careful. Now, if you really can incorporate these motions, though, just relax your arms. Where is that? Oh, because remember now, what we're working on is this idea of not turning to the ceiling. So let's see. Okay, I'm, just, I'm just leaving it here. Now, the idea of not turning to the ceiling first makes more sense, doesn't it? See, if now the idea that now that you've learned this feeling of putting the stick down and moving around it, right? Now, the idea of trying to do that and needing to lift to the ceiling before you do that, you can, but now it becomes much easier to simply, you're trying to move around this flat thing. You don't want to lift it up first. Just, move, just do this little slight bend, right? You're moving around it and then you're making your little throw. So you can leave that beat down there like that. Faint flam. Now just put the flam in. Faint flam. Put the flam in. You got to go around it. Just drop it down from there. Drop it down. There you go. Now add two notes. Isn't it two notes or what is it? Uh, 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 yeah. Uh, and then a left and a right and then faint and flam. Right, left, faint and flam. Faint and flam, right, left, faint and flam, left, right, faint and flam, faint and flam, da ah, 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 And you're already playing it ah, much better. Okay, so put the metronome on. I just want to make sure that you understand the timing of this. That's 40? Yes. What else? And two and one. Let's see if I can actually count it right. One uh, and uh, two uh, and uh, one. Oh no! Oh, we're playing eighth notes. Playing. Oh. Let me change my uh, time signature. Look what's look what's happened. Now it's too slow for you. <laughs> one and two and three and. Four and one and uh, this is yeah. Flam, nice and flat. Stay low. No, nope. where are you? No, nope. you gotta skip your setup. Three and four and one and two and three and parallel. One and oh, around the stick. Come on, you don't need to lift it up to the ceiling for the faint flam. There it is. There it is. Okay. Okay. So now you understand there are different iterations of the same thing. 
We're simply moving the flam over one note. Okay, so let me just see that you can do that. I'm pretty sure yeah, there that won't be a problem, but let's just. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and 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 two three and and faint and flam. Yeah, you got it. See now the faint flams move over, and that's yeah. going to continue. The next one is like the backbeat. Done and black done and. Um, like back beat. Four and one and two. Okay, and the last one. One and two and. Two and three. Four and one and two. Three and four and one and two. Three and yeah. So now you're starting to you know you're starting to get this. You're right. Just because you're making a single stroke. In this case, two up, two down. Now, what I'm just doing with one hand, right, playing doubles on the rebound. That's what that was. But as, just to, to button it up here. Yeah. Much better. Much better. Thank you. This really helped. This is what did it, okay? And and as you're experiencing living proof of the thing, that's what Murray said. He said seven basic strokes, is it right? And you'll see that you learn to make an alternating flam, so you have the single stroke, and then you apply that to a faint and flam, and then suddenly now you can play a flam a diddle because it's just a faint and flam with two more notes, and it will continue this way. We're yeah. building upon things that you already know. And we'll add, there'll be an element added, but at a certain point, there's only seven basic strokes. <laughs> the actual seven steps to heaven. Sure. <laughs> Go there. I'm going to turn the camera off. All right.